Contention. Critique. Conjecture. Conclusion. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Shop online anytime. They're open 24-7. On The Huddle this evening, Pam Corker is back. G'day, Pam. Good to talk to you. Yeah, you too. And uh, we have Cameron Slater from whaleoil.co.nz. G'day, Cam. And nice to talk to you. Pam, well, we're here uh, just before 4 o'clock, around 4 o'clock. Ewan MacDonald has been found not guilty of murdering his brother-in-law, Scott Guy, by the jury at the High Court in Wellington. What are your thoughts on this? Well, just firstly, uh, driving around town, I had a lot of chores today, and there was not one shop, one gas station I went into where it wasn't commented on like it was an upcoming test. Uh, I think the photo that I think is on the ZB website of uh, Anna MacDonald, you know, there's a daughter, a sister, a wife. How on earth can she be handling this? Uh, But obviously, I would have to say if I were a betting person, I would have said this was the result that the jury had to deliver given the um, direction by the judge. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Uh, Cameron? Yeah, Crown Law's not having a great time of it at the moment, are they? And um, I think there needs to be some serious questions asked about prosecutions and various different actions that are taking place around the country where it doesn't look like all the dot, I's are dotted and T's crossed. And mm. this is, a, I think, we're looking at another case here and you know, there's a, a great... I mean, I must shop at different places to, to where Pam shops, but certainly no one I was talking to today was talking about it. And um, But maybe that's just the part of Auckland that I'm in. Um, maybe it's you, Cameron. Maybe, yeah. Maybe everyone knows what I think about everything. So no one's going to die wondering, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly a very tough case, but bear in mind, of course, that uh, that Ewan McDonald is still in custody for the other crimes that right, he's yeah. So, well, there are some other, yeah, lighter. Yeah, the arson and the, yeah, yeah. And, and some other... OK. Um, it's, no, that's no biggie, mind <coughs> you. When someone gets even parole, it's never you walk out well, the door. There's well, always... What's probably going to happen with those? He's probably spent about a year in custody already, so he'll, he'll probably walk out the door in another couple of weeks once that... All right. up in pa- North. Pam, issue two is the uh, V8s. It looks like the council is to approve, they're going to approve on Thursday, I think it is, the V8 supercars, which will race at um, Pukekohe. This is very popular for petrol heads, of course, but it'll cost 2.1. Basically, it's a five-year commitment, $10.5 million over five years. What do you think about this? Do you, I mean, do you agree with it, uh, buying these events, and will ratepayers buy into this sort of thing? I- I think it's sweet. I'm wrapped with the news. Uh, I have my accountant, who I owe money to, she lives in Pukekohe. She's on the Business Association. They need coin down there. Pukekohe was... Oh, so that, I've tossed that to her. But Pukekohe was an obvious venue all the time. Um, and there are great areas of poverty, as well as they are very good at hosting events. Ten million over five years. Hells, bells. That's not too much. We can't, in hard times, stop funding Everything. I think it's a good, a good idea. Uh, yep, Cameron. You're not going to get any agreement from me on that. This is a, just an, a, a total waste of taxpayers' money. If it's 10.2 million over five years, I'll eat my hat. Nothing Len Brown ever promises it, it comes in at the, at the right price. And we'd simply, you know, it might be good for Pam and her bogan mates to go out there and out to <laughs> the Coley and. But, but it's nothing special. Pukekohe is an average track in an average town uh, doing average things. Where's the specialty about that? It's not a street race. It's, it's not Mount Panorama. It, it, it's bloody Pukekohe, for God's sake. Yeah, but Cameron, you must be aware, as even a passing student of the economy in New Zealand, if we don't look after these areas, these towns, it's not average. People live there. It's a big no, no. farming community. Why does the whole city have to look after it? Look at the... At the no, no, I was case. just the finishing. The for this is $10.2 million and a return of seven. What are they getting advice from bookmakers? Well, I was just going to continue, you know, because you have your bit of stand-up comedy saying bogan mates. For the love of God, there is a real um, go-ahead horticulture down there, that kind of thing. And if we don't look after the provinces in New Zealand, we are stuffed. Well, because what's horticulture all... has got to do with motor racing and bogans and following V8? Okay. Nothing to do with it. All right, there's a couple of things there, Pam. I, I, I'm not sure the, 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 the these guys that race this and the people that they tap, they're going to be staying in Pukekohe. However, my gut feeling is I, I like um, cities having events. No question about that, but 
This particular V8 thing, Pam, has got a bit of a history. Uh, Hamilton got burned. It cost them millions and millions of dollars, and it seems to me that the only one to benefit out of this is the promoter and the council. The rate payer takes all the risk. What do you say? Well, it certainly does have a history. That, to me, and we had to, we had council management and re- resignations last time, um, that, to me, augurs well. They'll have to get it right right from the start because everyone's looking at them. Uh, I just think uh, I'm... Just just trying to get you, Larry, to, to follow through on that and that, yes, towns outside Auckland have to get these events or everyone will shift here and the rents will go yeah. up. All right. Now we'll come back in just a moment. Cameron Slater and Pam Corkery. News Talk ZB, it's 16 to 6. News Talk ZB, it is now 14 to 6. Back on the huddle with Pam Corkery and uh, Cameron Slater. Cam, to you first. Uh, the Navy has been banned from Pearl Harbour. They're over there for an international exercise. They've been banned from... Pearl Harbour because of our anti-nuclear stance. What do you say? Well, you know, people have always said that uh, you know, it doesn't matter that the American ships don't come here. Well, it does actually, and this is how the, um, how the military uh, sends a little message. So you can play with us out in the ocean, but don't come and park your ships next to ours. We don't want to see you being too close. Um, this could, of course, easily be solved if we just um, had a couple of ship visits here. But, of course, we'll get all of the, the usual, you know, rent a crowd be out there in their dinghies protesting if a submarine turns up or or even, a you know, a moderate-sized carrier. I, I remember when I was in Sydney one day, once uh, when I was living there, the Kitty Hawk came in and it was a fabulous sight. And uh, having all of having that in there and, and all the visits, mm. and the, and all, it's just fantastic. All right, Pam, what do you see in this? So we, may, we may be very, 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 very good friends, but it only goes so far. Well, uh, also, I was just uh, trying to stay awake during um, Cam. He really is quite the dickhead. I don't know if I can do this again. But um, the Honolulu Star Advertiser, which, of course, we all subscribe to, um, I was surprised Jonathan Coleman, the minister, had to find out that way. If we're going to ask about spending money in Pukekohe, let's ask what the cost is of contributing 350 personnel, an Anzac-class frigate, to a place where we're only slightly welcome, and with the dodgy <laughs> name of Rimpac. <laughs> yeah. All right, you wouldn't be over there then, Pam, I take it. Well, you might as well, you might as well just wind up the armed forces now. Shut up for a minute, Cam. <laughs> Go and talk to one of your women. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's never been a guarantee, as we've found through archival footage, that sucking up to the states means they would automatically protect us. They will only protect countries who follow their line. So I find it personally a waste of money. Uh, well, OK. Uh, but I, I want to bring in another thing here, Cameron. Uh, we talk about green energy and nuclear power is at the centre of that, or should be. So the ban on nuclear-powered ships seems to me to be nuts, actually. Well, it should. We should, um, we should actually uh, get one of the second-hand uh, nuclear ships that are out there and, and plug it into one of our harbours somewhere, and then we get some cheap power. It, it's, it's mobile. It's not going to be at risk from any damage or anything. It would be fantastic. Um, I agree that the issue has always been clouded, the difference between nuclear-fuelled vessels and um, nuclear power, but it, it's a passionate issue for mm. New Zealand. All right, thank you both. That is Cameron Slater and uh, Pam Corkery on The Huddle. News Talks at B, it's 11 to 6. Mark Watson with Sport.